what is the deal with everybody taking Ozempic nowadays? Find out today on Medical History Mysteries. Welcome to Medical History Mysteries. Today, we are going to talk about, I think we can call it America's most popular drug right now, Ozempic. I'd say maybe more popular than cannabis. Did I just say that out loud? My goodness. Wow. You know, I can believe it because I mean, I'll even speak for myself. Like, who doesn't want to pop a pill and just like instantly lose weight and lose it? quickly. So, I mean, it does sound a little bit too good to be true. And when it sounds too good to be true, it has me wondering, is it too good to be true? Well, you and I are on around the same age group. So you and I may remember the days of Fenfen, right? Fendametrazine and Fentamine, which are used together uh, to promote weight loss. Uh, of course, ultimately it led to uh, heart valve problems, which is why we sometimes still ask it on the medical history. Uh, but the problem with a lot of the uh, medications that we use to lose weight is that once you stop using the drug, you gain it back. But the thing about Ozempic, I think that makes it so popular is that people who take Ozempic for diabetes lost weight, a, a modest amount of weight, but did lose weight and would often comment that they could not gain it back. And so, wow, let me try this drug that allows me to lose weight on a more modest scale, you know, and then eventually helps me keep it off. I'm sold. And that's why I think Ozempic is so popular. But, you know, it, it all harkens back to how we even develop these drugs to begin with and why they do what they do. And it has to do with, uh, with of all things, the Gila monster. Now, uh, what the heck is a Gila monster? Okay, so it's spelled G-I-L-A if you want to go look it up, okay? It's a, a lizard that lives in the Southwest United States. Uh, I have friends of mine that live out by the canyon and, uh, and they're always asking me, you know, come out to the Grand Canyon. We'll hike down to the bottom and sleep out under the stars at night. To which I always say, are you crazy? Why well, would I want to sleep on a canyon floor at night? You know, cold-blooded reptiles seek out warm places to sleep at night, like my sleeping bag with me in it. No, thanks. I'll be in the cabin. Maybe I'll see you later or maybe I won't. Okay, good luck. But the problem is the Gila monster was an enigma. This little guy has survived basically unchanged from prehistoric times in a desert. How does a lizard live in a desert for that long without ever evolving? Considering the fact that its diet includes, you know, high protein stuff like insects and other lizards and snake eggs and bird's eggs, it should have grown to the size of a crocodile at some point with all that high protein food. And yeah, in my opinion anyway, end up extinct. Why? Because desert foods can't support a crocodile. But the Gila monster escapes evolutionary demise. Why? Because it stays small. Well, how does it stay small? And the answer is the Gila monster secretes a hormone in its saliva that lowers its gastric emptying time and lowers its postprandial glucose so that it can eat twice a year and survive. Okay, that's an enigma in and of itself. Okay, fine. But what does it have to do with us and diabetes? Well, the answer is, heck, we'd like to lower the, uh, the postprandial glucose of type 2 diabetics, and we'd like to slow down their gastric emptying time too. But, you know, we're not related to the lizards, are we? Well, as it turns out, uh, us humans are not far off the reptilian tree, some of us more than others, right? So what does that mean? means that maybe we never went looking for this hormone. Maybe we do make this hormone. And we do. And the hormone is called incretin. And from that discovery, we developed things like the GLP-1 agonists uh, and the dipeptidase, I think I said it right, DPP-4 inhibitors. Uh, and basically what those do is work like incretin or support the, the production of incretin uh, in type 2 diabetics. And that lowers their gastric emptying time. It lowers their postprandial glucose. And those are things we've always wanted. 
uh, to uh, be in our arsenal for treating type 2 diabetes. So let's just be clear here. We're not, when we're taking a pill of Ozempic, we're not taking a pill of Gila Monster saliva. This is a synthetic form of a hormone that is similar to what they have, right? No Gila Monsters were hurt in the making of this video? Absolutely not. It's Inquitin, which is our hormone. The discovery came as a result of their hormone. We found our hormone and we decided to synthesize it. Now, here's the thing. The initial uh, research indicated that we'd have to make this drug subcutaneous injection, right? We couldn't give it orally because like insulin, we've broken down in your, in your stomach. We couldn't give it just by IV, which would be terrible anyway, because it get broken down in the bloodstream. So the only place to really put it is in a subcutaneous injection. Now, to make it palatable, we'd make it once weekly. All right, so it's a once week injection. That's wonderful. The first was Bayetta. And Bayetta was reasonably successful. It was really the one that was designed from the initial research into the Gila monster saliva. Then came Victoza, which was considered an upgrade to that. And then came Trulicity. Now, Trulicity, which is still marketed really heavily on TV, had not only the ability to, to do what Bayetta and Victoza didn't, which is, you know, produce even more profound uh, re reduction in, in A1C and also uh, in blood glucose. But here's where we start to find weight loss becomes a notable side effect. Now remember, by slowing down gastric emptying time, you're limiting hunger, which means you eat less, which means you lose weight. Conspiracy theories abound about what I'm to say next, but when Ozempic is in its pipeline, Ozempic demonstrates even greater weight loss and modest improvements over Trulicity. What does this mean? Again, I can't say who did what, but there are people out there who believe that the manufacturer of Ozempic knew in advance this was going to be a breakthrough drug, not just for type 2 diabetes, but also weight loss, and applied for two patents. One for Ozempic to treat type 2 diabetes, and one for a weight loss medication, which was later called Wagovi. And then cross-licensed with another company, the same drug, to be sold as an oral tablet called Ribelsis Tablets. And that's where we stand now. We have the same drug under three different brand names, two of one of which is designed specifically for weight loss, and two, one injectable and one oral that's designed to treat type 2 diabetes. But Ozempic is so popular that we actually ran out. Diabetics couldn't get Ozempic because we ran out. Well, why, Viola? They make Wagovi. If people really wanted it for weight loss, why didn't they just get that? Number one, it's considered by many insurance companies as a cosmetic drug and therefore not covered. And number two, let's face it, if you give some mild persuasion to your doctor as a pre-diabetic, hey, I'd like to try this drug, you could get Ozempic prescribed to you. And if you decided to give it to your neighbor or your close relative, well, that's not something I can comment on. Uh, now we have Monjuro, which is the next generation drug. And even that also, uh, is, is going to be used eventually uh, for weight loss. And it's also injectable. So that's why Ozempic became so popular. But let's face it, it didn't hurt that uh, social, some socialites and celebrities out there also pushed Ozempic. And I think it's really funny now that people have lost so much weight and keep it off so well, that now they're complaining they have Ozempic face and Ozempic butt. I kid you not, okay? So their face feels kind of drawn and droopy because they lost a lot of the subcutaneous fat. And uh, same thing with their butt, okay? Not exactly uh, the way they like it to look. Sounds like it's pretty good for plastic surgeons because they can then fix whatever Ozempic flattens, I guess, maybe. Absolutely right. So uh, more on Ozempic. I think we need to, to do like another uh, episode on Ozempic, man, because there's so much to talk about here about, uh, you know, what to do next and, and how it affects dentistry. Uh, and, and what to do if you're the dental professional and you maybe suspected your patients using Ozempic, not to treat their type 2 diabetes, but in rather uh, to uh, promote weight loss. All right. Well, everyone, stay tuned for next week when we cover part two, Ozempic. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>